biotechnology. And today she's going to talk about the new strategies in designing the rice to be the multiple stress tolerant without yield penalty. So please welcome Dr. Sumei Yu. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Also, first I'd like to thank the organizing committee for the wonderful meeting, especially after the wonderful party last night. And also, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Apicho, he really is very nice and uh, worked very hard. Okay, and today I'm going to talk about the uh, strategy that we, uh, recently we have been applied for breathing rights for multiple stress uh, tolerant and without the uh, EU uh, penalty. And the current global climate change tend to shift, to shift the weather to more extreme variations while further aggravating the world crop productivity that's already reached a plateau. And for example, this is a uh, uh, flooding in the cornfield in the Midwest uh, in the US in 2008. And in that year, we know the corn price uh, increased uh, significantly. And in this year, um, more than 50% of the uh, United, United States suffered severe drought. Okay, uh, in, the, in this area, uh, from uh, moderate to severe to extreme to exceptional drought. And the consequence is, um, see this corn field is almost all dry out and similar for wheat and uh, soybean field. So how are we going to deal with this kind of uh, uh, environmental change that have been uh, uh, shipped to the extreme uh, variations? And also, in, by, it, it is predicted that by uh, 20, okay, uh, 2050, uh, so many countries will encounter the water crisis that will limit uh, agriculture productivity. And ABA has been among so many uh, homo. ABA is most well known for its uh, link to uh, uh, stress. Uh, ABA will control many gene expression involved in development, dormancy, germination, abiotic stress response, and stomata exposure, uh, aperture, and that control C quality and stress tolerance. So, um, ABA has been extensively used for uh, breeding of drought tolerant crops. And for instance, modification of ABA synthesis and activation to reduce transpiration, increase ABA sensitivity to gall cells, or gall cells to induce uh, transpiration. But the other approach, such as increased root growth for better water uptake, this approach has been less applied. And another approach being commonly applied is drought ex uh, expression or drought inducible uh, gene for desiccation tolerance. So today my talk will be mentioned that related to uh, these two traits uh, in our strategies. And root growth have been extensive studied in Arabidopsis, but we found that, uh, there are many differences between Arabidopsis and rice, but in rice it has not been uh, uh, well characterized. And rice contains seminal root, crown root, adventitious root, and also lateral root. That's very different from Arabidopsis. Pen root architecture is important for water and nutrient uptake anchorage in the soil and interactions with soil microbes. Root growth is induced by nutrient deficiency, drought stress, and osmotic stress. For 130 million hectares of rice plant, about 30% have been affected by drought, 20% by salinity, and 10% experience low temperatures. So our major goal of breeding rice is to uh, generate rice cultivars that will require less water, tolerant to low fertilizers, meanwhile uh, give high yield. 
how are we going to do that? And many hormone control plant growth, but we know that among them, GA always interact antagonistically with ABA throughout the entire life, uh, plant life cycle. So at different stage, you see that they always antagonize to each other. But then today, I'm going to talk, uh, introduce you our strategy that we control GA level or uh, ABA response. They will control rice growth, stress tolerance, and uh, yields. The first uh, uh, example is an ABA-induced photosynthetic promoter regulate HVA1 in rice, leading to root growth, stress tolerance, and efficient nutrient utilization. This work uh, was most, mostly done by, by my graduate student, uh, Yi Shi Qian, and by postdoc, Xuan Fang Lou, and in collaboration with Tuanghua David Ho. And ABA induce proteins or molecules to protect uh, cells from desiccation damage in plant under abiotic stresses or in maturing seeds. This uh, uh, molecule including osmo pro protectants, oxidative stress defense, or chevrons, or for movement of water and ions. So uh, one example I'm going to introduce you later is about this deer uh, protein. And for ectopic expression of stress tolerant proteins, in fact, it's already extensively done, and also um, in many cases due to uh, yield penalty, so inducible promoter has also been, also been used. So yield penalty, called, but yield penalty caused by conjugated OV expression will cause yield penalty, so that's why they, uh, they, uh, this uh, inducible promoter has been uh, used. But often, too high background before induction, so we need a promoter that will confirm low background, the high stress inducibility. And uh, so we're going to generate composite promoter, and this derived from promoter of HV1, HVA22. In their promoter region, they contain ABRC complex. This, uh, from these two promoters were ori originally identified in Tuanghua David Ho's lab. And he identified ABRE and also coupling element. The by combination of ABRE and coupling element, they it show a high ABA inducibility. So, but it had never done in, never been done in changing rice. So we uh, fuse this. We combine uh, this A3 from 22 and then. Sorry, E3 and A2 from HVA1 and the E1, ECE1, this coupled element from HVA22. And with, uh, we fuse with one or two or three copies to gas, but because we found that one or two copies confirm to low level of uh, inducibility. So in here, I want to show you we uh, use uh, three copies. But this is uh, um, coupling element and ABRE. In fact, total length is only 30 base pair. So exclude, exclude this retention side. With this short fragment uh, in three tendon repeat, it could confirm ABA inducibility as well as temporal and spatial uh, induction uh, regulation. First, uh, we fuse to gas uh, with uh, these uh, three ABRC uh, 321 um, fragment, and they express in leaf and the root. But without ABA treatment, in leaf is very low level in vascular tissue. But after ABA treatment, then uh, widely express in mesophyll cells. And in root, without ABA, we could barely detect activity. But with ABA, then express in lateral root, primordial, and in root tip. So here is your letter uh, root primordial and root tip, and also in the endodermis, and also in the exodermis that committed to uh, the extension of letter root uh, primordial growth later. 
So uh, since this promoter is active in root, so we want to see how uh, the, uh, the promoter could be used for uh, expression rec uh, recurrent protein in root. And we select HVA1. It is uh, belong to a dear uh, protein. It's a late embryogenesis abundant protein produced in maturing seeds also in plant under various abiotic stresses. The protein could be classified to six groups based on conservation in amino acid and expression pattern. And proposed function have been involving either hydration buffer, iron expressor, molecular chaperone protein, renaturing or protein nuclear transport that will maintain cell function from damage caused by water limitation. The none of this function is really have been a, a, a proved. And HV1 is a DL3 group uh, protein and is induced in young body seedling by APA and various abiotic stress. And ectopic overexpression of HV1 has been shown to confirm abiotic stress in various plant species. So we fuse this ABRC321 promoter to HVA1, and we show that in chain genetic rise, uh, induced by ABA only. In without ABA, the basal level is very low in both leaf and root. And they could be induced, expression could be induced by ABA, uh, salt, cold, and dehydration. But upon recover to the normal growth condition, the accumulation uh, decrease gradually. And we believe that's correlated with the uh, uh, increase and a decline of ABA level. Then we look at, uh, uh, exam how this uh, APRC321 HVA1 expression in root. Uh, this is immunocytochemistry to look at the endogenous HVA1 uh, gene. Although the HVA1 is from body, and the ch this is transgenic in rice, but the HVA1 antibody could recognize uh, HVA1 uh, from both uh, plant species. So we love APA. Um, this is a cross section of root, and this is a longitudinal uh, section of stem and, and of root, and also root tip. Without APA, expression level is very low in both water type and changing the line. Okay, she's a, a root primordia and a root tip. But after APA induction, you can see the significant uh, increase of accumulation of HVA1 in endodermis and uh, some in uh, cortex and in uh, lateral root primordia and uh, in root tip and vascular tissue. And in changing line, always accumulate at much higher level than the wild type. Then we check on the root growth. Uh, this is a uh, uh, root, uh, this is a wild type, and these three independent changing line from Tynon 67. Uh, without APA, we see slight increase in root growth, but with a low concentration of APA, then we see the uh, better growth of root system compared with the wild type. And with a high concentration, then the root growth is inhibited. This is in different from Arabidopsis because they always claim the APA suppress uh, root growth. But I think in rice, it depends on concentration of APA. And, and under sorbitol uh, treatment, that's mimic uh, uh, osmotic uh, stress. Uh, here is the water type. Here are three changing lines. Before treatment, the root lines uh, in some line may be slightly longer, but after treatment, you see significant increase in root growth of this changing line. Then the quantif quantification shows that the length and the lateral root number, lateral root density in crown and, and the vicious root and seminal root. Um, maybe in, before sorbitol treatment, some uh, is slightly increased in changing, in changing line, but after sorbitol treatment, there is a significant increase uh, in this uh, uh, criteria. And similar uh, in a seminal root, and also similar for shoot and a root uh, biomass. Uh, after uh, sorbitol treatment, always there is an increase uh, in uh, changing lines. 
And then how about the, the water use efficiency? These are uh, two cultivar, Taino 67 and Kitake. And uh, this, uh, this is Changjenny line, water, uh, this water type, and this black bar are Changjenny line. The same is this water type, this are Changjenny line. And the Changjenny line use more waters, but meanwhile they also produce more biomass. So after you divide in the biomass with water use, in fact they have significantly higher water use efficiency in both uh, rice cultivars. And we also uh, want to know whether the root growth system uh, is important for nutrient uptake. And this root grow in, um, in the medium, in the hydroponic culture, this is with full uh, nutrient. Uh, there's no difference between uh, the Changjenny line and the water type. Here are two cultivars, Tainong 67 on the left and Kitake on the right, the black bar uh, water type. And after we dilute, we dilute uh, 10,004 of nutrient solution under starvation, then we see the significant increase in the root growth in Changjenny line. If we, uh, in the, for the full nutrient, we might uh, subtract uh, nitrogen so this is nitrogen starvation. Also, uh, there's an increase in uh, root growth, particularly for uh, Kitake. And under phosphate starvation, then also there's an increase uh, in root growth in this uh, uh, Tainong 67 and Kitake and root. So this uh, root increase is not, in, not only responsive to stress, but also responsive to nutrient starvation. But how, how whether the plant uh, will uh, be tolerant to uh, stress? Here show the kitake before treatment and after dry rewatering for four cycles. Look at the survival rate. The non-transformer is significantly lower than the change in line. Also, uh, under stress uh, treatment, 150 millimolar sodium chloride one week, and then two millimolar sodium chloride one week, and followed by two weeks. The survival rate of water type is also significant lower than mutant that's range uh, from 95 to 100 percent, or in here, uh, after a lot prolonged salt treatment from 65 to 100 percent. And how about cold treatment? These two cultivars uh, before treatment and then four degree for three days. Leaf roll up, but after recover to 28 degree, um, the Changjenny line recover quickly, but the non transformant it takes, it, the recovery uh, would take uh, another two to uh, three weeks. And how this, whether, how about this plant uh, performance in field? And we grow this plant in a flooded condition or non-flooded condition. Uh, this uh, non-flooded condition was subject to occasion uh, rainfall, but most of the time they kept in a condition like this. And we found the yield uh, in, under flooded condition is uh, in a changing line. This Kitake is not as good as the water type, but in a non-flooded condition, most of the lines are better than the water type. And this changing line, in fact, they also are uh, equivalent, either the equivalent or higher than the uh, water type under normal growth condition. And we reason this why uh, uh, the yield is uh, less under floody condition. Probably the photosynthet will be moved to root for to promote root growth. So under floody condition, there is no advantage. But under non floody condition, this uh, higher root biomass will confer advantage growing in this kind of uh, dry condition. So we see the increase in grain yield. And the next uh, uh, strategy I'm going to show is to control gibberating level by defective G2 oxidase that could enhance grain yield and stress stuttering in rice. This work was done by postdoc Xuan Fang Lou in collaboration with uh, Professor Liang Zhuqian and uh, Tuanghua David Ho. 
So we know that in the textbook, uh, they will show you the GA control uh, plant growth and development throughout the life cycle from seed germination, hypercotian hyper root elongation, flower development, fruit and seed maturation, leaf expansion, and internal elongation. Uh, in our uh, trim changing the uh, mutant population that uh, Dr. Yu Yixin had made introduction in the first day, we had generated uh, more than 10,000 uh, mutant line, more than uh, 60,000 uh, franking sequence. And in our uh, library, we could see many mutant with abnormally high or short uh, height. And so we know that this uh, particularly high line probably caused by uh, GA biosynthesis gene, and this short dwarf was caused by GA deficient, uh, due to GA deficient. Um, because we, uh, the reason is because the tDNA is inserted in promoter region, it activates uh, GA2 oxidase. Example shown here is the three and the six and the plants become severe drop due to the overextraction of GA2 oxidase. And uh, what is a GA2 oxidase? What is its function? So this is about synthetic pathway of GA and converting from G C20 GA to C19 uh, GA. The active form of GA will be uh, the GA4 and the GA1. GA20 oxidase and the GA3 oxidase involved in biosynthesis. The GA2 oxidase will inactivate the active form GA or GA precursor. And C19 uh, form of uh, GA20 oxidase, GA2 oxidase have been more extensively uh, discovered because they contribute to higher population. But this uh, C20 type of GA2 oxidase inactivate GA uh, precursor. So in, we have identified GA2 oxidase 5, 6, 9 belong to this group. And in our early study that we found in this uh, GA activated mutant or over extrace GA2 oxidase, there is increase in root biomass. Also, uh, earlier tethering, normally uh, root, uh, rice tether will take place after three to four weeks, but we found in one week the tether already uh, grown up. So now we could add these two functions to the textbook that the GA will promote tethering and advances root development. And we know that manipulation of GA levels is tremendously important for agriculture. This is the basis for first the green revolution that increased wheat and rice during 1960 to 1980. This increase of this crop increased almost threefold. And why is the, um, the plant height or effect on grain yield? And we found that the uh, GA level was suppressed tethering. So by re over expressing GA2 oxidase, reducing the GA level could increase tethering, also increase uh, root biomass. And with this semi drop rise, you could, you, could, you could confirm low gene resistance, also use less energy on vegetative growth. And because the strong root system, it will confirm better fertilizer and water use efficiency and become more drought and stress tolerant. But for over extraction of this uh, uh, GA2 oxidase uh, have been uh, uh, employed by many laboratories, but we found um, there is a severe trophism by ectopic expression of this uh, C20 uh, group uh, GA2 oxidase, but still the enzyme activity is too strong. So we try to reduce the activity of this uh, GA2 oxidase, so they would, will not cause, cause too severe uh, trophism of plant. And in this uh, C20 uh, group of uh, GA2 oxidase, there are three conserved domain, one, two, three, that are absent in C19 uh, group of GA2 oxidase. And we try, Shen Fang tried to make a mutation of, uh, of one of the GA2 oxidase gene, uh, it's a six. 
And you can see this is a wild type rice. And these are various uh, point mutation on these three domain. Domain one, domain two, and domain three. Some are not effective because overextraction or loss mutants still cause uh, severe dwarfism. But with the some, then you start to see semi-drop. That means the enzyme activity is not as strong. So now we can control rice height just by controlling the enzyme activity. And I'd like to uh, draw your attention to this particular line, line E and line K. And the prime height of line E and line K is similar, uh, it's higher than the, this uh, uh, overexpression of water type g 2 oxidase, but less than the what uh, the non-transformant, a uh, non-transformed rice. And T the number, sorry, this is not effective. Okay, this is just T the number. T the number of the two lines are uh, similar as uh, expression of water type g 2 oxidase, but uh, higher than the non-transformant. And in two crop season in yield, in field, we found the yield is significant increase in this line E, uh, more than 30% of increase. That's like about 13% uh, less in this K line. And then we check their uh, stress tolerance for dehydration, salt with a 200 millimolar of sodium chloride, heat 42 degree, and cold at 4 degree. And K line, uh, e line only slightly increase in stress tolerance or similar as uh, what uh, the non transformant But this K line has significant increase of stress tolerance compared with the non transformant Although the wild type uh, G2 oxidase gene overexpression could give you very good uh, stress tolerance, but its yield is very poor. So that's why we like to use the mutated G2 oxidase. And K although its yield is slightly decreased, but it's confirmed very good stress tolerance. And E have higher uh, yield, but the stress tolerance is not as good as the K line. And the shoot to root ratio uh, decrease in this line. That means the root growth increase in this line, in K, line KE and line K. And also the water use efficiency increase in line E and the line K. Okay, so now we can manipulate plant height and root system by control GA level that will lead to increase in stress tolerance and or grain yield. Rice have been grown in rice in uh, underwater in the rice paddy. So why we bother uh, to concern about the draw uh, stress? Um, we know that in rice paddy, the, the water will evaporate not only from leaf, also from the field. And on average, one kilogram of rough rice will require 2,500 liters of water. 25 to 30 percent of world's fresh water is used in irrigate for irrigation of rice. Rice production must be viewed in the light of the emergence of water crisis, as we mentioned at the beginning. So there is a growing need for water savings technologies that we could grow rice in the aerobic uh, condition. That means the rice variety grow well in the non-flooded field. And some efficient uh, irrigation systems, such as alternate weighting and drying, are needed. Not only uh, we uh, could grow, we hope that in the future we could grow rice in this uh, aer aerobic condition, and also because the flooded water, that it caused the. Uh, because the anaerobiosis are micro in water, they will produce a lot of methane and carbon dioxide. That's a very potent uh, greenhouse gas. So if we could grow rice in an aerobic uh, field, then we also could reduce uh, greenhouse uh, gas. Uh, finally, I want to show you that uh, although now we try very hard to increase uh, photosynthesis in leaf, but the nutrient uptake or water uptake from uh, the so, uh, uh, root is also very important. So coordinated and efficient photosynthesis and nutrient or up water uptake are keys to the ultimate uh, crop productivity. Okay, so I will stop here. I will be happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Dr. So because of the time